The single greatest key to winning your defensive encounter is an indomitable spirit that will not be defeated. The Manus X firearms training system is used by everyone from defensive shooters to competitive shooters to even U.S. military special forces. You can train like each one of those groups and get better between range trips. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video is a carjacking attempt out of South Africa that does not go well for the carjackers. The intended victim is in the Land Rover that's in the forward position and this car that's, a, that's an Alfa Romeo is behind him and you can see that that's a car that you're like, wow, man, I wouldn't really expect a bunch of carjackers to come out of there. Very likely stolen, though the police haven't caught anybody in this instance. So you're going to see a couple of carjackers jump out, both of them armed here. You can certainly see as they come through, the first guy's got a gun in his right hand. Now the, the uh, owner of the car, though, has a firearm as well. He's going to get off one shot at each of them and come forward a little bit you can see the hole in the passenger side window there and now he's gonna get out and go after these guys and start shooting down the street at them as they're trying to pile in the cars we go back to the first point of view here you see the guys are going to get and use the car for a little bit of cover and then they are going to pile in now if you look back to the left you can see our aggrieved carjacking attempted victim is going to get after them a little bit. Looks like he clears a malfunction there and then head back to the car when he is out of ammunition. So we're going to see him here come back to the car because he is out of bullets, but they are going to drive off and uh, that reload was not very useful in this instance. But he drove him off, didn't lose his car, wasn't hurt, won the day, and that is where this one ends. Good stuff there all the way around from the Defender. If you want to get better at your self-defense, think about joining us on the Active Self-Protection Extra channel where we post videos now five days a week that help you get better with handgun skills, with empty-handed skills to think better and to know what gear and equipment is the best that can help you to protect your family. Out of today's video, I want to think about the incredible difficulty of the transitional space of your car, about keeping your tools on you and being aware and ready to know when to use them. Whole bunches to think about out of this one. First one is the transitional space that is your vehicle. You think about him coming through the gate in the gated community. We see this all the time, particularly in Africa, but I see it all over the world, that where those gated communities are, that gate opening and closing has to be open for long enough for you to get your car through, close slow enough that it's not going to slam into somebody's high value car. And that is a place where we see carjackers and armed robbers you routinely use to launch ambushes. So those gates have to be seen as a transitional space, a space where you can be victimized. And especially when your car is stationary, it is a likely place of attack. You've got to be careful there. Now, these guys are going to pile out of the car. You notice they're going to block in with their vehicle here. They leave the car in the spot where they it, it can't you know, close on them and then they're going to come in. Now pay attention right here and you can see as it stops, you can see the first guy coming out has a firearm in his hand. You can see it right there on the screen. And so this is a deadly threat right from the giddy up. And notice that our driver of the Range Rover is looking over his shoulder and he's trying to find where these guys are. He has seen that something is there. Paying attention to your circumstances, which a lot of people would call situational awareness. I like to say paying attention gives you time and time buys you options. But notice that he is looking, trying to look over his shoulder past the B pillar. That is a very difficult place to see. And if you've not taken some classes and really seen how difficult it is to get your firearm out and get around to somebody in the B pillar on your dominant side, boy, you really want to be uh, not doing that for the first time when you are in a gunfight. But notice he's able to go get his gun at this point. You can see him reaching his right hand into his lapel. Looks like he's got something shoulder carried or something like that. He has his tool on him. Incredibly important lesson, keep your tool on your person. I don't know that he'd have had enough time to get into the glove box here or get into the console here. Had it on his person, certainly wasn't in the house in the safe, and that made all the difference here. Keep your firearm on your person. So with his combination of awareness and being tooled up, he had the skills and the plan and the attitude to protect himself. That's incredibly important here. Now notice he puts a shot on that guy and drives him off, and then puts a shot on the second guy. You can see to the far right of the screen, and there we see him cringe. Now I don't know if he got him. The police haven't caught this guy, so I'm not sure if this is fibs, you know, fudge, I've been shot, or if it's fibs, a fudge, I'm being shot at. But at any rate, that shot on him 
got him to drive away. It got him off of him, whether it's Fibs or Fibsa. When you're the first one to put shots there, that is going to make a significant difference. Now, I don't know if he got him or not because car glass and car doors do really crazy things to bullets. But at any rate, that Fibsa factor or Fibs factor incredibly effective and got him ahead of the curve. Being first is very important. Now, we're going to see our driver come out here, and as he piles out, he gets back into a gunfight with these guys. This is one spot where I'm going to say I don't really recommend what he did here. The reason for that is, is that he is now peeking out, and he's got himself into a secondary gunfight with these guys, rather than taking a more defensive position himself. I would recommend here, if you can, if you're going to pile out of the car, totally understand that, but use the car effectively for cover and set yourself up in a defensive position that if they decide to come back around, now you set, have set a counter ambush for them rather than walking into their potential counter ambush for you which is one of the things that he had a hard time with here next one of the things that uh, we talk about all the time on the channel something that i got from tom Givens: make sure you put as many hands on the gun as you can you may only have the ability to put one hand on the gun however if you possibly can, put two hands on the gun. And when you have two hands on the firearm, you're gonna be more accurate, your recoil control is gonna be better, you're gonna be able to put shots on target better. This takes training and it takes time. And untrained people, I see put one hand on the gun all the time. Put as many hands on the gun as you possibly can. You will need it on that day. Now, we see the guys run off here, a couple of interesting things. Notice that they are using the back of the car here. You can see he is using the car as cover and concealment. Very difficult shot for our good guy, and that is the counter ambush that I was talking about. You notice here that our intended victim is going to come out and encounter this guy behind the car. Very difficult shot because that guy's taking up a defensive position because he knows now that his prey is armed. This is why I say far better probably in this instance to take up a defensive position yourself rather than go on offense and walk into a counter ambush where he is a difficult target and you are an easy one. Difficult to shoot through the car here, but car glass does crazy things to bullets, so do car panels. Now, thankfully, these guys are bugging out, and that's what we see all the time. Once they face significant resistance, when their force monopoly evaporates, they're going to get out of there. Now, notice look like one time there and here a second time. You can see our good guy looks like he's reaching over the slide like he's having malfunctions. Can't tell you enough, carry a reliable firearm. You have, need to have vetted the gun that you have. I won't carry a firearm that has at least 500 trouble free rounds through it, at least 100 of those being the defensive rounds that I'm going to carry. And you should know all day long that the gun that you are going to carry is absolutely flawless in its reliability. You should also know how to clear a malfunction and do so quickly under duress. This is another instance of that. Now we're going to see him go to work and he's going to run the gun out of ammo and then go back to get some more. Now notice here that that reload, even if he had had it on his person and been able to get a, a reload in two seconds or so from concealment, these guys were bugging out and he, he would have had to have gotten behind cover. It's not a significant issue here. You're going to fight with what you brought in the gun, which is one of the reasons that I say I want to have as many opportunities in the firearm as I can, which is why I encourage people to carry the highest capacity firearm that they reliably and regularly regularly can. Now, what that is for you might be different than it is for me, might be legislatively limited or whatever, but carry the most capacity in the gun that you can because in a CCW gunfight, honestly, a reload ends the gunfight and that's what we see again and again and again on actual video. Thankfully, here it ends the gunfight in a positive way. He ran out, they ran off, and he did fine. But make sure that you have enough capacity in the firearm. More is better because it gives you more opportunities to cover your ASP.